I've been feeling fairly stuck, letting go of making things happen and just allowing there to be space has been on my mind. On one hand, it's made my days a little more relaxed for my head. And then at the same time, I also took in a bunch of stuff, but I just didn't maybe connect the dots. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to In Residence. I'm Keith. And I'm Laura. Hey, Laura. Hey, Keith. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm all right. What have you been up to? One thing that we had talked about, I'm really interested in coaching. Mm -hmm. There was kind of more of like an introduction to the coaching field, kind of a little online workshop. Did you mention that to me? I did, but I didn't tell you that I actually signed up for it. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. So tell us more because I barely remember. Yeah. It's familiar, that, <laughs> but so, I don't know what it is. I'm sure I must have been Google searching or looking at articles around coaching mm -hmm. because I was getting served a lot of sponsored ads yeah. around coaching, around training for coaches, certificates for coaching. There's a lot of them out there, and I don't know which is a good one or a bad one, but without knowing, I just really wanted to get a high-level overview of the field, and so I so I signed up for one, and it's only like a seven-day work at your own pace, you have access for a month sort of deal. So I'm digging in. I did the first video today. It was pretty good, and so I'm going to keep working through that over the next several weeks. Cool. I'm I'm pretty excited about that because we've been talking about what is one small thing you can do to kind of start exploring of, is this for me? Yeah. When we first started talking, I was like, and I'm going to do everything to become a coach. And then I can consider whether or not I'll use it. I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think maybe I should just dip my toe in and learn more about the field and then see what's going on, because there's lots of great people that are already doing that. And so it might just be enough for me to to know more about it. Yeah, that reminds me of a podcast I was listening to where they were talking of kind of a, that same premise of like dipping your toe in to see if you even like it before you fully invest. And it kind of blew my mind. Go and rent a Ferrari instead of trying to buy it. <laughs> that like right. I feel like I might have brought it up in like like a while back, probably when I first heard it. I kind of carry that with me still, and that's part of the reason why we read so many books because it's like okay, buying a book is like dipping your toe into that subject or that topic or that author, and it's a pretty small investment. There's a high likelihood of a very positive return if it's five, ten, or fifteen or twenty bucks, and you get one great thing out of it. Oh, that was a good investment. I, I always go for it. And so that's really cool that you, you're trying to class out. Yeah, so I'm doing it. I'm feeling in flux. Like the seasons are changing. Okay. It feels like a pivotal time where things are shifting. Yeah. And so I feel a little maybe unsettled, but also optimistic. New things are coming, but that's also a little unsettling uncertainty right right so that's kind of where i've been at over the last few days and i've been listening to seth godin interviews or gary v podcast like the one you sent me right to pull back and give myself some space see if it helps illuminate something or the path forward kind of thing right like exploring but part of that is you got to kind of shine a light to see mm -hmm. i'm intentionally pulling back so that I can regroup before I go forward. And I know we've been talking about that a lot, really, over the last few weeks, and maybe every week. <laughs> yeah. It felt kind of good. Like, I gave myself permission to, you know, chill and take some things in, see what pops up. And, like, like I think you walked in on me, like, taking notes the other day, like, while I was listening to something. Letting things percolate in my head, I guess. And not, like, wondering, why aren't you doing more? Why aren't you doing this? It's more of, like, I'm doing this, and it's... It's good the possibility of the shift and the uncertainty and actually, okay, I, I'm not quite sure what's happening, but I know things are shifting. And so how am I going to roll with that? So that's where I'm at. 
You talked a little bit about uncertainty. It just made me think of, and it was around this time of the year, actually, but when we went to visit my sister in Germany. Oh, yeah, that was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. <laughs> okay, yeah. But the the thing that's coming up for me is we were young. We just, well, I decided we were going to go to Germany and visit Jenny because she was studying abroad. And I do what I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> I planned it and I, I thought I did a pretty good job planning. I'm like, okay, we're going to go to Amsterdam and and then we'll shift to going down to Germany and get down to where Jenny is. And this was before the days of Airbnb and VRBO. There was a small bed and breakfast. I was emailing with them to try and do the reservations like you did back in the aughts. It's like 2004 mm-hmm. or, or five, 2005. Okay. And so I remember emailing back and forth, but never having like a confirmation number or anything for the place. And remember, we didn't know where we were going. We didn't know what was going to be be there we didn't know if this place even existed really now i'm thinking there's a little uncertainty in travel especially for me Mm -hmm. and you're going to be traveling again this week i am you don't have as much uncertainty but what what that makes me think of is now you have to prepare and you have to get your bags packed right and get ready for your journey and so it's got me thinking how do i prepare for the journey what am what am I going to put in my bag to help me go where I want to go? And it's situational, right? And it's individual. And it, you, there's lots of factors to take into account. So whether we're going to Germany for a week or you're going mm, four hours same. away, it's different. Right. I get stuck in prep mode. I was feeling that this last weekend too, and we're preparing to host Mm -hmm. for the holiday, right? For our families. I think I even wrote about like, okay, I got to get out of prep mode and I got to push the button on chill and relax mode. (laughs) So how do you prepare to go on the trip or to go on the journey or because you have to take the steps. You can't Mm -hmm. just sit there and pack your suitcase all, all night or all week or all day, right? Right. You have to actually right. go. I tend to draw that out, right? Yeah, you do. I like to pack as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> what? Don't take sips when you're going to say something. <laughs> you're so determined and you're just so on it. It's, we're so different. <laughs> so this is, this is the way that I do it for, for a trip. I think about my head all the way to my toes and I go through and I make a list of what do I need for each part of my body. And then I'm like, okay, now just implement, go, go, go. And I cross everything off the list. And I always have an asterisk kind of in my head of, well, and if you forget something for the most part, you can buy it when you get there. So like, so how does that translate into metaphorical speak that we're talking about of like going on this life journey? going towards a goal that we're setting. You mean you don't want Laura's travel hacks? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a different podcast. Oh, okay. When we can schedule that, maybe to release like for next spring break time. Okay. We'll put it on the content calendar. <laughs> I got thoughts. I bet you I got do. thoughts on that. Uh, kind of what do I pack in my bags, quote unquote, for a project? I often think about what are those resources and tools that I need to move move forward. But I am a little similar in how I said that I often am. I say, well, if you forgot something, most likely you can find it wherever you're going. I think that same thing a little bit. There might be more things that will be helpful on the front end, but you can also find them on your journey. So I want you to talk a little more about that because Cause it's not me. You get as ready as you can and then you launch and you go and you're like, I'll figure out the rest on the way if I need to, if I forgot right. something. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested in how do you go from grabbing your suitcase, getting it in the car when you don't have it all figured out? Like our trip to Germany that you were talking about, 
Right. I don't remember being anxious about the uncertainty with that trip, but there was a lot of uncertainty. There was. So how did, how did you keep me calm? <laughs> and how did we just travel ac- across the ocean to, to Germany? I had it all planned out because I love planning. And so we are going to fly into Amsterdam and then end up in Berchtesgaden and visit my sister. Just remembered that you wanted to be a travel agent. I did. Growing up. Of course I did. No wonder you're so good at planning trips. Oh gosh, I love planning trips. Okay. Back okay. to the story. Yeah. So, and we we're going to go down to Berchtesgaden and then back up and fly out of Amsterdam. Yeah. Right. So we took the train. We had a Euro pass, Euro rail pass. I don't remember being that worried about it either. And I was probably, I got this. And I didn't know any better. <laughs> you didn't, but everything Except for went, that I was a little hesitant to travel just because that's me. A little bit, but I had been to Amsterdam before, so I kind of knew my way around. One thing I do remember, because it wasn't all completely smooth, I remember there was one point we were on the train and we were going um, from Amsterdam to Germany we got off at a train stop because I think we were hungry or we had to change trains. We missed our stop. We So we had to get off at the next stop, take okay. that back to the stop yep. that we missed to get onto a different train. And then we had to wait for like an hour and a half or something for the train. Oh, and we were hungry. So you went wandering off into some village. I did. While I had like five suitcases with me sitting on a cobblestone <laughs> elevated platform right while my girlfriend just wanders off into the distance and our phones didn't work because we didn't didn't have have international calling no like i have no idea if she's if if she doesn't come back in time that's maybe when like the uncertainty and the anxiety kicked in for me on that trip actually a little bit (laughs) i forgot about that part it all just came flooding back okay but i came back with fresh bread and cheese and meat and yeah yeah. We made it, right? We got back on the train. Yep. We connected with one of our friends mm-hmm. that was waiting for us and I think was a little concerned about why we didn't get off the train when he thought we would. Yeah. So we headed out of Munster, made it down through Bavaria, past all the castles. And when we got to Berchtesgaden, it was late. I remember we were at this hotel or bed and breakfast. It was a smaller place. And I remember I had only been emailing with the people that owned it and ran it. And so I didn't really have a confirmation number. I had an email I had printed off and I was really crossing my fingers that we would have a place to stay when we got there because I wasn't quite sure. I don't think I told you all that. You didn't because like (laughs) you're telling me this now and I'm like, I don't remember being that nervous about it. I was just like, we're on a train and we're going to show up to where we're staying. That was. Pretty smart of you to not tell me. Yeah. It it worked out. It was good. It was a a fun. It was. It was beautiful. And we showed up late and I think the restaurant was closed and they opened it and we were trying to communicate and. Yeah. Poorly. Poorly. Yes. We're. Everybody there. We'd be like, no, no sprechen zu Deutsch. Uh, And there, and and then we knew how to say, do you speak English? Nein sprechen kein Deutsch. And then they'd all say like, oh, not really. Not very good. And I'm like, right there. Like, like they said that in English. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, we're going to be okay. They're very gracious. And we tried. I know we tried to do some we did German. Try. But like we weren't. Everybody was very gracious hosts. Yeah, they were. Yeah. We prepared. As best we could. As best we could. There were still some things that we couldn't anticipate. And yet... We were able to figure it out. Maybe talking around the thing that would that would be the most helpful for me to think about and say, which is, I don't need to prepare as much as I think, and I simply need to move forward and learn as I go. And maybe that's the feeling, the the, the changing season. It's kind of like, okay, it's it's time for me to do a little rock step and then jump and it's going to work out. It's going to be okay. It's going to be, and I'll adjust as I go. Yeah. That's probably why I'm talking about that. And like, that's kind of like the underneath part that I'm maybe, uh, still a little afraid to 
to admit of like, oh, okay, I, I simply need to go. That makes sense from, from my perspective, because sometimes that's part of the fun is the adventure of figuring it out along the way. I will say that there have been times when your approach would better serve us. I'm thinking of I'm another. I'm listening. <laughs> I got to hear this. Well, well, hold thinking... on, let me make sure this is recording. Okay, good. <laughs> So I'm thinking about another travel example. Okay. And then we can get back into kind of more project. But every year we go to the Indy 500. My whole family was there. My parents and my sister and her family and us and our family. And we got an Airbnb. It was a nice big house, but we kept realizing it didn't have all the things that we really needed to be comfortable. And we aren't. I, like, I would say like we're not decent very mattresses. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, and we're not very high maintenance necessarily, but I think that trip alone, I came back with a brand new twin air mattress, mm -hmm. six new pillows, two new blankets. Yeah. Because it was not furnished fully. <laughs> right. <laughs> Although we figured it out and I was able to source the things at a target. I think if we would have said, Hey, kiddos, throw an extra pillow in the car. It's nice to have something. Or we even thought, oh, let's let's throw a blanket or two in. We might be in a different spot. I've drilled into you so much that we can find anything on the other end. And we could, but at the same time, it might have been less inconvenient if we didn't have to. Yeah. And that when we were younger, it was we had we were a little more lean with our spending. That is very true. And so now we're... A Two years ago, I don't think we could have done Yeah, we're that. a little more comfortable with flying by the seat of our pants, even though I'm a little uptight and always trying to think of like what might come up. I've come to a little more towards your side of like, we'll figure it out. We'll be okay. There's, there's going to be a store within 15 minutes of us, wherever we go usually. But I, I totally get what you're saying is that packing a little extra... Sometimes my help or just a little more foresight. Ultimately, it, it is what it is and we, we're fine. You also don't want to travel down to Indiana with a mattress on the top of your car. Exactly. Right? No, that'll be next year. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's making me think of something that I, I watched. I was watching a master class with Jay Shetty. Yeah. Did you watch that one? No, I didn't. But he does a lot of the meditations in the call map. Yeah. And so he was talking about like a story of the kind of like a proverb, I think of somebody that had to build a raft and cross a river. And so to be cautious of when that might happen again, they strapped the raft to their back and carried it with them wherever they went. And then they came to a cliff and they were going to climb a cliff with the raft on their back. Oh. And it's like, okay, put the raft down because you don't need it because you're going up a cliff. And trying to let go of that. And I was like, oh, that's me. Like, I need to let some of these things go. I need to, like, it, we, if we forget toothpaste, we'll find toothpaste. You know, if we need a couple pillows, we'll be okay. You know, fortunately, we'll be okay. Like, we're in the position. Right. We're, we'll be fine. Or you could also do without the pillow. Yeah. I like that. That was a master class? Yeah. So it makes me think, what are the rafts that we carry around that may not be serving us in the way we think they will. One that I keep thinking about is if I carve out my whole day on Saturday, I'll be able to make progress. I feel like that sort of, it, it's probably reminiscent of some of my dissertation days where I'd get up and I'd go to the coffee shop and I would just write, 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 write. Yeah. I would go from seven or whenever the coffee shop opened until when it closed and then I come home and see you all. Sometimes I think that's how I get to be productive is I carve out a whole day on the weekend like I did when I was dissertation writing. That's how I make time on my project. But I don't think that's something I need to hold on to and hold as precious, if that makes sense. So how do we create the conditions to do the work we're seeking to do? That's what pops up in my head and that's been on my mind. So I'm glad we're talking about this because it reminds me that, oh, this is something I've been thinking about. To me, that's part of preparation. 
I'm preparing to create the conditions. And like, so for like you for writing, you were writing more often Mm -hmm. and not waiting for just the weekends all the time. But often that's the conditions we found ourselves in because you have a full-time job. Sometimes you went away on a retreat, like with some of your cohort and some of your friends and Oh yeah, we have writing retreats. Yeah, you created time and space for you, not only get some work done, but to actually have like community and support. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big thing to to think about when we're approaching anything is not waiting for the right conditions, but making it so that you can move forward. It wasn't perfect for you having to go to a coffee shop and work all day, but it's what got you to the finish line. Yeah. So like when you were saying like, what what are the rafts we carry? Mm -hmm. Like I instantly go to the same things. Like it's not good enough. I'm not good enough. Uh, My, whatever I'm trying to create, nobody would pay me for that. Or who am I to say those things? I know that, I mean, that comes up and up. Some of those things that I carry that keep me from crossing the river or the cliff, I guess maybe. So letting go of those things and not, waiting for it to be just right simply going for it and correcting along the way Mm -hmm. finding the tools that i need when or if i happen to need them if i don't already have them ask you another question yeah so when i look back on our traveling like take germany when we went to germany i look back on that And although there was uncertainty at times, although we had to figure it out, I look back and I go, gosh, that was a good time. That was a great journey. Mm -hmm. You forgot the crabbiness of Keith? I did. That just dissipated. (laughs) I I know we've hinted at it before, but I think that's the pivotal moment where we found out that I'm an introvert and that I need time alone to recharge. Yes. Because that might have been one of the longer spans that we were continually around each other. Yes. And were. so, yeah, you definitely were like, why is he so cranky? <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, I don't know. And then, Like, we're in Germany. It's beautiful. Yeah. And we had a really great time. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I was just thinking that sometimes you forget about the times that were scary or frustrating. Like, oh, I wish this would go differently. I think that's perspective, right? And that just goes to show that what in the moment, if something seems bad, let's say, mm-hmm. if you get a little more perspective, it's like, okay, it's not so bad. It's not so scary. Or it's not the worst thing ever. Right. You know, that's why I think that's why we don't dwell on the little things like that, that weren't, weren't the best part of the trip. You know, like, I don't remember the bad parts except for like, well, I was cranky a a couple of days there, like in the mornings (laughs) or something, or like, I remember us like hiking up to the top of that almost mountain just to, just to see like the sign of like where the monks brewed beer or something, Mm -hmm. you know, it was at Salzburg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like having schnitzel, like the the, the little quiet moments where it was just a tiny little adventure within an adventure, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it it makes me think of any project that we're doing as well, even like my dissertation, like as we're, as I was talking about the days spent at the coffee shop, writing and writing Mm -hmm. and writing, I remember the good things and I know it was a lot of work, but I remember the writing retreats that I had with my cohort over a weekend where we wrote and we had meals together and We wrote and we took walks and, you know, those sort of things. Meanwhile, I'm home with two kids doing laundry and dishes, (laughs) like Mr. Mom in it. Yep, (laughs) you got it. You got it. I was playing Hot Wheels for sure. (laughs) Like watching Cars 2 or something. Yeah. (laughs) We had a great time. I'm sure you did. And we did too. (laughs) Yeah. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that although... There's uncertainty. I didn't know if I'd be able to continue to graduate. I didn't know if I'd be able to write a dissertation. I've never done that before. Mm -hmm. Some of that angst and frustration and the hard parts melt away a little bit. 
and the the path there's there's a part of the path of that journey that just shines bright You're like wow that was worth it that was great what i'm thinking about that you're so happy <laughs> why do you not think that when i'm thinking of work i tend to remember when it went wrong that's why i brought up like i'm thinking of like oh what i'm producing might not be good enough and i get in my own head like it comes back to me when i'm starting a project again i don't focus on well i've done it before or i've done something hard before the way that you're remembering like oh that was that was hard and i did it yay that's something i would love to be able to go more towards whereas i'm more of oh i did something hard and oh luckily that worked out and then the next time i try to do something hard i'm like this is so hard. Yeah, I'm probably not doing it well enough. No one's going to like it. That, that's that been my experience that I'm trying to shift out of and why I'm talking about preparation and creating the conditions because I'm still thinking that way a little bit, but it's not how I'm moving forward. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's still there. My default of, I tend to remember the hard parts and, oh, that could have been better. Or I, process improvement. Sure. You're always on the wrong end of my process improvement. <laughs> well, if we do it this way, in, like in the kitchen or something, right? But I really, really don't want to approach things that way or only use the good parts of that process improvement and be aware of the traps mm -hmm. that tend to lie in that and move on, move on from that and not, not act from that place. Act more from the place of possibility, right? Yeah. Definitely didn't think you were going to get us talking about traveling again. <laughs> you must be so happy. I'm so happy. I love <laughs> talking about traveling. Mm. Anything else to talk about around this? Uh, this might almost be like a, a recommendation, but so I'm just going to say it though. Okay. Like I'm sitting here thinking if there's something that you want to do or if there's something you want to go after, not sponsored, but check out Skillshare, check out Masterclass. You know, there's all these fairly affordable, like LinkedIn learning, right? Mm -hmm. These pretty affordable. YouTube? Yeah. Oh, yeah. YouTube's free. <laughs> I mean, I, I use YouTube so much, I forget about it. Yeah. Like, like, so I'm just thinking, especially in like the last 20 years, I've become a much more independent learner. That's something that I need to carry with me and putting it to use. So for me, it's learning how to to edit video, learning some graphic design, right? Mm -hmm. Learning some woodworking stuff so that I can work on things around the house, changing broken parts on the car with some help, can figure this stuff out. Mm -hmm. And it takes some preparation, but it takes a little more just getting in there and figuring out what you don't know and then going and figuring that out. Mm -hmm. It's pretty empowering if you think about it. To bring it back to the travel analogy, of course. when you used to, <laughs> when you used to uh, buy a book on the country you're going to travel to, read the book, but then never went there. So if you learn how to do all these things, you have these tools to learn how to do the project you're trying, but you never actually start start yeah and do it. If you were to watch all these videos on how to make bookcases, but you never made one, even though you wanted to, sometimes we can be collectors of ideas and how to's and information without actually doing the thing we're learning about. You're learning all about it because you have something that you want to create and do. Why shouldn't it be you that goes out and does it? I, I would just, I would just recommend make one small incremental step on something you've been meaning to do, whether you feel like you're ready or not, create the conditions to move something forward. I think we end with that. Sounds good. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, you don't know directions. I don't. I'm going to check. Because I think you're wrong. But you could be right. All right, hold on, hold on. I just want to make sure we got it right. Yeah, you're right. Can't believe you're right. But you're right.